Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the TF Tuesday podcast. My name is Syl. It's good to have you back in the miasma that is the space between seasons two and three. So as I said in the last episode, we'll still be coming to your ear holes on a weekly basis, but we're doing something a little bit different while we kind of recuperate from the very intense season. Uh, I've been calling these episodes interludes. We'll see if that sticks or not. But we're going to be focused on a specific topic today to kind of explore something in more depth with some subject matter experts, I would say. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the TF IRL subreddit, and I'm really excited to have some very uh, insightful people on to talk about said subreddit. So why don't I start off by saying to my guests, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what your role is within the subreddit. So why don't we start with Iota? Hi, uh, I'm Iota. I created it. Uh, I am uh, of deepest thunder, uh, but I'd usually go by thunder. Um, I am a moderator on the subreddit and the current owner of the Discord server. Amazing. And Stormy? Hi, my name is Stormy Finnick. I mainly go by Storm or Stormy Online, or if you know me, IRL, it is name redacted. Um, <laughs> I don't work too much on the subreddit. I'm mainly one who works on the Discord. I basically helped make the Discord what it was and have been more or less running things in the background ever since. Amazing. Well, I'm really glad to have y'all on, and for our uh, listeners who are down with the lore, uh, the invitation to actually have everyone on was extended, I believe, in, like, episode six of season one. Yeah, yeah, so this has been a long time coming, so I'm glad we could finally uh, make good on that extended offer. But yeah, I was curious to know a little bit more about how the subreddit came to be. Uh, was it in reaction to something specific, or was there a different impetus behind creating the TFIRL subreddit? Uh, well, it was pretty simple, actually. Uh, somebody made a TF meme on Ferrari IRL, and somebody commented r slash TFIRL, and I clicked on it, really excited. And it didn't exist. And I like, this needs to exist. I actually uh, didn't... I didn't create it right away. I actually left a comment saying, somebody needs to create this. If no one creates this within 24 hours, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I checked back 24 hours later, and no one had made it, so I did. <laughs> and, and the rest, that they say, was history. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say... um uh, it's like in the top 5% of subreddits, which is kind of crazy. Really? It has like over like 30,000 users. Yeah, on the on the actual side, it says top 5% of subreddits. And I was like, oh, what is that? And then I clicked on it. It's like a, it's like a numbers game. So basically, like in terms of raw numbers oh, yeah. of subreddits, you're in the top 5%. So I mean, that sounds <laughs> impressive. But how many subreddits are out there? That's what. True. Is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think to kind of put this in, like, the course of events, I think this was early to mid-2018, I think somewhere around April or May. April 29th, 2018, and I quite literally just pulled it up to find that information as well. Amazing. That's really that's really interesting that it was kind of just like a, you know, you put the offer out there and then you're like, well, I'll do it myself. I had no experience with... Uh running subreddit so i didn't want to jump into that but i ended up doing it anyway and it, it worked out yeah well, that makes sense and it's curious to me as well because uh, you know maybe this is just an impression of someone who is not quite as steeped in reddit but um you know there are other like transformation subreddits that seem to have a bit of a re- reputation of being hostile to you know, most versions of TF outside of like narrow specific type. So I was curious uh, how you feel about the other subreddits and if that, if what I'm saying is true and that TF IRL is kind of like different from that, because I, from what I've seen, TF IRL is very different from that. Like it's not hostile or am I just like, you know, do I have this uh, skewed perception from my uh, Twitter ivory tower? Um, I, I might be able to kind of speak more into that. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I know uh, other places do have a certain reputation. Obviously, there are subreddits like, you know, Furry TF, where obviously it's going to be 
a lot more furry skewed. Um, and, and I don't really want to like be here to like disparage other places, but yeah, you know, yeah. they, they do have those reputations. Uh, specifically to TFIRL, um, I would say like, I really do want to encourage you know, all sorts of uh, interests in the medium and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it really is kind of difficult to not, not necessarily, you know, make sure that everybody is all happy, you know, happy with everything, because th there is a certain undercurrent, especially in the furry TF community. Um, there's like a little cohort that is like maybe a little bit borderline misanthropic in the sense that anything that's not mm -hmm. just human to furry can get a lot of flack from a vocal minority. Um, so really, it, it is just a it, it's always a challenge to make sure that, you know, different viewpoints are heard and seen and also trying not to just, you know, just silence stuff that I don't want to hear, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that that openness is something that I know I particularly value. I think we've kind of like tried to make a big deal about being open to people on this podcast. So I'm really glad to hear that that's kind of the the approach that you're striving to with the subreddit because at least again from my little ivory tower in twitter when i've thought about subreddits from transformation tfirl has always stood out as being one that is very open to all different kinds of tf instead of like very specific ones yeah i mean i it does occasionally like bubble up in the like comments or whatever people not liking a certain thing but we generally deal with that pretty well like yeah yeah no absolutely and i'm really glad um and then i guess i'm curious then because you know there's the subreddit and then there's the discord and the discord's very active um <laughs> as someone who um is also not always the most up-to-date with Discord. Uh, again, I'm dating myself a little bit here. Um, I joined the Discord server and I was like, wow, there's so many people here and they're all talking. Uh, so I was curious what spawned the idea of having like kind of like a, a Discord as like kind of a side piece and like what is the dynamic between like the Discord and the subreddit? I think some users just suggested making it. And like, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't fully remember the story there. I don't know if I do. Uh, I mean, I have a bit of history with it. When I, I have a lot of history in Discord personally. I've been using Discord since now that they published this information since July fourteenth of twenty sixteen, which is like a very long time. Looking at it now, that's over six years. And then the Discord server. I was one of the group of us that joined on the first day. We actually have a special role hiding if you could see it, that's the 24-hour club which was all the way back on uh it was november 24th of 2018 so just a yeah. few months after the subreddit came to being here we go and the main thing i remember is that joining into there um i essentially bullied my way into becoming an admin <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Iota, as I said, didn't really have a lot of experience with it, and I, being someone who finds myself becoming a moderator on a good number of servers, um, was like, hey, I have a good bit of experience with this, and I can help you out with this, and they're like, okay, here, take the keys, yep. um, have it back by eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, I, I didn't know how to set something up, I'm like, alright, here you go. Yeah. Your moderator now. So a good portion of, especially the initial server creation, is essentially made how I wanted to do it in terms of both experience running a Discord and like what things work, what things don't, what things should we have, what things shouldn't we have, and all sorts of things like that. Now we have... Um, one of our main things that has been actually surprisingly works out very well is a suggestion box where we basically have a form of more or less direct democracy in terms of how some things happen in the server. Obviously, we still hold the final say on what things get done, but for the majority of things, if there's like something like 
we need another channel or like some things are getting a little out of hand Ser server members will recommend things people can vote whether they do or don't want that and then usually with moderators in that channel as well working with everyone to be like okay this is how we think we can pull this off and after a bit of back and forth usually it goes through and to date we haven't really had any issues with that yeah that's fantastic yeah so i i i just did a search the the very first piece of mail from the tfirl moderator mail uh feed is just a question about how how about we make an official tfirl discord yeah it's just from some random user <laughs> Amazing. No, I, I really dig that. And, you know, it, it's really interesting that you kind of, you've already kind of gotten into this. Like, I was curious to know a little more about how managing a community of like 30,000 users has been. Because, again, there's 30,000 users on the subreddit, there's 1,000 users in the Discord alone. You mentioned that there was a bit of a direct democracy type deal, which really piques my interest as someone who has a very niche interest in electoral systems but i know this isn't actually an election <laughs> thing um but i'm curious to know a little more as to like how you have balanced giving folks in the subreddit and the discord a level of ownership over the actual space that they're occupying while also still being you know in a moderating position um I, I will say, at least for me personally, um, I see myself more as, you know, yes, the title does say owner, but I feel like I am more of a steward of the community and a servant of the community. So I, mm -hmm. it, it takes a, a lot of effort on my part to make sure that I put what I think are the community's interests first ahead of, you know, any personal bias or personal grievances or anything like that. Yeah, similar. Like I said before, I was kind of hesitant to even, like, be the one to create this. So it's kind of just, I happen to be uh, the founder of it, and I, I don't, like, that doesn't get to my head, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that makes sense. And I think, you know, it's always important to have a, a level of humility when you're in kind of that position, just given that, I don't know, I as someone who has somewhat been in that position before just not in tf spaces like it can be intimidating to some degree and you know you want to really create and set the tone for the space while also ensuring that folks have the ability to kind of chart their own stories and it can be difficult to find a good balance between the two certainly yeah also i, I do just want to just go back uh there was that question about the dynamic between the discord and the subreddit mm -hmm. um i i think early on there was a you know, it, it was fairly well um, combined, but I know it, at least in recent years, they've kind of, you know, taken their own separate paths of evolution. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know, for for example, there are quite a, quite a lot of few folks on the Discord who's, who's like, never been on, you know, on, on the subreddit at all, and, and they've just come in through invites from, you know, other friends on the server. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I also think it's worth mentioning that there are people on the TFIRL Discord server that have said plain out that they're not really into transformation. They're just there just to have a place to be and chat with folks. So it, it, it's a very interesting, interesting dynamic that we've built. That actually is really interesting to me. So you said they're there to just kind of like hang out and chat even if they're not into transformation. So what about the space do you think really drew them in then if, if you've had these conversations? I'll say that I know a good bit of it. We are obviously with being adjacent to not just the tf community but also the furry community that we're a very accepting space for a lot of i don't want to say deviant behavior but just like the sort of stuff that you don't easily get in the real world um mm -hmm. like we have two channels dedicated at this point um, we have a community support section. We started with just a channel dedicated to trans, non-binary people, and just a space for them to chat, which um, has just kind of evolved into just a generalized gender-related channel. We have one that's a more broader, just general LGBTQIA groups. Um, 
we've recently added one that's just for neurodivergency and things of that nature because we just don't have anyone who's neurotypical. I joke, but like, <laughs> there is a very, very, very large amount of people who have some form of neurodivergency, whether it be, you know, autism, ADHD, depression, just open up. Um, crap, what's the name of that book? The, um... The DSM-5. Yes, just open that up, and I'm sure you'll find someone on our server that hits just about every one of those. We also have a channel for other kin, Therian, Therian people, and then we've also had one now for those who are, um... Um... Plural? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just Looking just, at yeah, it, yeah. and words just are not coming to me. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. I did my research. I was looking at the channels. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and every one of those channels did come out of that suggestion box, you know, just someone who's like, hey, I, you know, I, I see that we have a lot of people with, in this case, you know, plural identity. You know, maybe it's worth creating a channel just for, you know, those folks to chat and, you know, and, and get together. Yeah, the, the only two that were there, like, longer, and one one's kind of a weird situation, the, the gender one was added before the suggestion box was implemented, I think. And then the Therian, other and Therian channel had kind of a uh, weird path of evolution where it was created as one of the earliest channels. It was super unused, so it got, like, archived. And then pretty recently, uh, somebody put in the suggestion box to unarchive it and, like, uh, use it again. And it's actually been having, uh, like, coming back to life. Yeah. That's really cool. So then my next question then would be, have there been any conversations from any of those specific channels in relation to TF or just those channels themselves that have changed your viewpoint on how you view transformation? I think that the biggest one that has a personal impact on me has been the theory and, and other kin kind of just like that, that whole like subsystem. I mean, I, I it, it wasn't until that really, you know, started happening that I kind of started questioning myself in, in that sort of direction. You know, am I, you know, it, it, are, are lizards just a fascination for me, a hyperfixation, or is there, you know, something deeper about it? And, and that's just, and that's still something that I'm thinking about, and it, it really has mm -hmm. helped me, like, maybe get a more appreciation for just those kinds of TFs as well. The server pink pilled me. I'm, I'm not even going to deny that at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but, Honestly, I love that. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's been a bit of a recurring joke how, like, nearly all of the people who are... Um, we just go by Overlord, Underlord. It's just a bit of a tongue-in-cheek humor um, for admins mm -hmm. and moderators, but, like... I think, like, looking through our list, like, the vast majority of our moderators are, in some form or another, trans, and yeah. a good yep. number of them are also asexual, which is a, it's a weird overlap, but that's yeah. just yeah. how things have rolled. Um. Yeah, I, I counted them a while ago, and I, it was definitely over half. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that there's a, obviously, a large portion of um trans folk in the community in general i mean like it's literally called transformation mm. and, yep. like to transform so uh, that, that's, yeah, that's, that doesn't surprise right. me and and <laughs> even irl transformation yeah yeah that's why the uh transgender channel is one of the earliest ones this is like i know there's gonna be a lot of trans people in this yeah yeah exactly um but that's that's really interesting um in particular the the point around uh, having that theory and channel kind of open your eyes to a different way of thinking and a different level of appreciation. Um, Iod and Stormy, were there any conversations that stood out for you that really kind of changed your minds on, or like at least your perspectives on TF outside of being pink pilled? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess for me, I can't say there's been too much. I mean, maybe not so much in those channels, but just other conversations with people is definitely gotten me interested in some types of tf that i definitely wouldn't maybe have been so interested in in some cases that also is my exposure into what types of or like how a certain tf is done 
Like there's some ways that someone will do a piece of art that I've only seen it really done one way. And I'm like, I'm not a real fan of that. But then someone will be like, I'm into this and this is the sort of stuff I have. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I dig that. I guess similarly, yeah, I've, I've been introduced to uh, a lot more uh, parts of the uh, community that I wouldn't have otherwise found on my own. Uh, this is a big, definitely, like, the biggest part of the TF community I really interact with. So just seeing the people and the concepts that are brought here is, is really yeah. I, I just wanted to say I think maybe not stuff that I'm now like definitely into but just having conversation with all these you know, different people and different viewpoints has helped me to great get a greater appreciation just for you know all the stuff out there you know i i know going in you know stuff like mental changes that that was something i wasn't like really you know really sure about but kind of, kind of just like hearing people talk about you know mental changes stuff like character transformations or even like human to human like i've really i feel like i've really gained a deeper appreciation for those aspects of transformation just from talking to folks yeah no that makes sense and you know i want to pick on something you said iota because you mentioned that it's kind of you feel like you've kind of got into experience like a specific part of the community and i saw that your subreddit conducted a survey on your active members and there were some really interesting results to me but in particular what caught my eye the most is that the folks who interact with the subreddit mostly engage with reddit for affinity and e621 for tf content so do you think you're capturing a slice of the community that is particularly unique because i don't think i have seen a lot of people say, oh, I interact primarily with Reddit for their TF content. And again, this might be me from my Twitter ivory tower. Yeah, I, I'm sure we have a major skew there being a subreddit. Uh, I mean, the, the rest of the list makes sense. That's about what I'd expect. But yeah, we are mm -hmm. being a subreddit. We're definitely getting that skew on the Reddit. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the biggest slice that we probably get is maybe the younger sort of demographic. Um, I know a lot of transformation spaces online are, you know, adult only NSFW, and, and and that has kind of kind of been a sticking point with us and some of those other spaces. You know, especially you know that mm -hmm. you know that that subsection of the you know TF community that's like no, it's just always a sexual fetish. There should be no minors at all. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I think our presence as a, you know, a subreddit and specifically a meme subreddit has, um, ha has given a space for, you know, younger folks, you know, folks in high school, 15, 16, 17 years old to ha have a place to kind of just talk with other folks and, and, you know, connect over transformation. Because, I mean, you know, it's, it, you might see it as a sexual fetish, but that doesn't explain why is it in every single cartoon show, you know, from... <laughs> 1980 forwards so <laughs> yeah i mean again to be clear I, I think you know i've said i've said many times on this podcast obviously i can see it in part as a sexual fetish but for a lot of people i completely agree it is not and you know i think that it's good that there is a space in which you can have that sort of age variation but then i'm curious you know has there been any challenges in moderating that kind of space because obviously when you are actively kind of you know having folks who are minors on in a like a discussion setting you have to be a little more cognizant as to how moderation is conducted and what is uh permissible and what isn't i feel like somewhere around half of our conversation in the uh, mod chat is just making sure the minors are safe here honestly <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, the, it the, is. Yeah, you, you can one go ahead, of our top Stormy. concerns. Yeah, I, I I think the biggest impact that has had on the community is the way that we do our um, our adult role requests. Um, when it first started, you know, it was just a uh, you know just reach out and we'll give it to you. Um, eventually, we started a channel specifically for f folks to post and say, "Hey, I want this role." And I think about at the end of 2020, so about two years ago, we actually implemented a no, you have to be active for a certain length of time before you can even get access to 
a request the 18 role because um, some of the folks that we had had to kick out I mean, were like, well, I only lied because I wasn't a member of the community. And I was like, it wasn't a big deal. But after, you know, after they had gotten to know folks and have gotten part of the community, they were like, oh, I actually felt bad about lying. So, ah, interesting. So we felt that, yeah. So so just putting that you know, that barrier in place to kind of just stop people from just jumping in straight to the adult channels, I think has helped towards, you know, making sure that, you know, minors aren't in um, adult spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had very few issues where it's become, or very few instances where it's become like a serious issue in terms of like minors interacting with um, people who are of U.S. legal age in a, um, mm -hmm. um, what would be the best way to describe it? A, like, I don't want to say a non legal way. That's not maybe the best way to put it, but <laughs> in a way that could endanger, yes, that could both endanger themselves, others, mm -hmm. the server as a whole, things of that nature. Fortunately, I think we've only ever had to contact Discord Trust and Safety once, I think. Once over or twice, like a, yeah. Yeah, once or twice over a serious issue. And to follow up with mm -hmm. what Thunder said about, like, a few people coming in and lying about their age when they first got here and then later promoting it, there was a almost a miniature crisis that we had because it happened where, like, one person did it and then it just cascaded down to... It must have been well over a dozen users where we're like, you're of legal age now, you weren't then, so what do we do about that? Because obviously we don't want <laughs> to act like, oh, well, you know, you're of age now, it's okay we can let bygones be bygones because no that's not a good president to set yeah yeah but fortunately we came through there we've pretty much got the 18 plus registry as the channel says to a point now where i don't think we're going to change it anymore because we do basically everything but carding people at this point and frankly none of us want to be entrusted with asking people for a id because of just mm -hmm entirely too much hassle that could go into that so at this point we've gotten it down to a point where we can usually get a good judge of character for how long someone has been how they've been interacting in the server to do we think they're gonna lie about their age or not and mm -hmm. to my knowledge that hasn't really been an issue maybe yeah. you guys could chime in but i have not really seen an instance where we've actively denied someone the 18 plus role when they requested it yeah no no i think that makes sense and i will say that you know obviously my inclination would be like oh you can just card people but you do have a community of over a thousand people so i recognize that uh that would be quite the undertaking and you know i think a lot of this ties back to just a lot of internet etiquette and safety in the sense that for a large, to a large degree, you kind of have to take things at face value and then see kind of how things pan out, for lack of a better term. So I'm glad at least that when issues have come out, you've been able to kind of handle it to some degree. I then guess my kind of takeaway from that, though, is are there any other kind of insights you've gleaned about how TF fans interact with each other in terms of having the space that has this wide variety of people with different ages and backgrounds, like, are there any takeaways we should be mindful of when it comes to constructing inclusive communities? I guess the first and arguably most obvious thing is don't just shut people's conversations down because either, you know, you don't like it or you feel it's uncomfortable. Um, obviously that to a point, like, um, I don't believe we've had any like serious issues with it, but like active trolls coming into the community, no, there's no need for you to come in here and being like, oh, y'all are furries and y'all like TF, so clearly you must be into insert thing here. That's just some mm -hmm. stupid point. That's just, you know, boot, bye, nice seeing you, come back next week. Don't actually, but um. Yeah. <laughs> um, I. I, I really think the only drama that we've seen, at least on the TFIRL server side, is kind of just stuff that spilled over from other communities and not necessarily specific to TF. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, the only thing to kind of be mindful of is, is kind of just always be willing to listen and you know just 
hear what others, someone else has to say. You know, you might learn something new, or it might just be okay. Yeah, you know, you you don't have to say your opinion always. You know, it, it's sometimes just just mm -hmm. as good just to keep quiet and, and let someone else have the spotlight for a few for a few minutes. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And then, how would you suggest? people who want to build their own TF community or space going about doing so? Like, do they need to wait for an opportunity where no one takes them up on the offer to create a subreddit <laughs> for 24 hours? Or are there other paths that people should take and be mindful of? I don't know. I just, I'm just here. <laughs> it just happened. Iota's just vibing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the biggest thing is, is give folks a sense of agency over their community. You know, like what we do with the suggest suggestion box or something to that effect, you know, have, give them a reason to invest in the community. And, and I think that'll definitely help it to thrive. Mm -hmm. um, I know, like, and the other thing, like kind of leading into this, is also just find some people that you're friendly with and just talk with them. I've personally, I have a massive social safety net mainly of people from this server for when like say my mental health decides to just jump out the second story window that i'm next to um i have people who i can easily lean back on and be like hey i feel like shit i need to talk to someone about this before i do something unwise <laughs> it's a big thing where it's like you know if you get friends in your community your community tends to work a lot better yeah, and I think also kind of towards that end, um, and I, I sometimes feel like moderator, moderators might have a tendency to just ignore folks, but I really make it a point of of, of my own to, to kind of just, you know, if somebody DMs me just out of the blue, kind of just respond, you know, don't just leave them hanging or, you know, just generally be open for a discussion like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it, I definitely feel like when you're a moderator in a community and people do try to reach out to you, there's almost an onus to like getting back to people to some degree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I, I will say like sometimes it might be a, a sense of, uh, oh, the, this person is reaching out again, but you know, kind of just approach every conversation with an open mind and don't just, you know, either ignore them or be like, oh, you roll our eyes, be like, oh, no, not, not this person again, because that, that doesn't really create a, a, a warm space for anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fair. And I mean, you know, obviously, you know, when there is a, sorry, I'm going to start the sentence again. Obviously, I know that being a moderator is a fine line, and you obviously want to be open to the people in your server, but you also don't want to have i guess for lack of a better term like being like bombarded with messages so have you ever had to kind of draw a line there i don't think so no yeah i don't think we've ever had like an instance where like something has gotten that out of control at least in terms of dms there's definitely been cases where like inside the server like some channel will have something happen and lots of discussion will be generated from there and that usually is a get all hands on deck sort of situation but those are at least for us fortunately exceedingly rare to have happen yeah that's good yeah and, and in my good. experience yeah I've, I've never been bombarded with dms and usually i'm the one who's sending out a lot of dms if i have to you know cl <laughs> clean up the mess or follow up on stuff that you know came out of one of those you know massive blow-ups in a channel yeah no that makes sense so then i guess as kind of like a final question, and I feel like this is kind of central to the subreddit, I'm curious to know what you think makes a good TF meme. Like, what components do you need <laughs> to look for to cobble together high-quality jokes? Well, to start with, I'd say that there's two main things you're going to see on the subreddit. One of them is going to be the arguably lower-quality TF space IRL type of meme. Where it's like, mm -hmm. huh, like you see something that's like, that looks like an Animorphs cover just out in the wild. Or one of my <sighs> personal favorite experiences when I was training at Lowe's many years ago, they were giving me this training that was a 
Human Resources Transformation, which <laughs> also had the wonderful secondary effect of it being abbreviated HRT. <laughs> oh so at the end of this training, it's like, congratulations, you have completed Lowe's HRT training. I'm just like, please Google things before you do them. It's not this difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, someone also might have known exactly what they were doing, which to which, in which case, I would like salute them. But yeah, I wouldn't correct them if I was in that position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the uh, my personal view is is a, a good joke is one that is original but also accessible to a lot of folks. Um, mm. And. And, and, and I think there's a distinction to be made between high quality and then just something that gets a lot of upvotes because that's not always a one-to-one -one correlation. Oh, yeah, of course. There's certain things that, like, you know, people are like, ha, it, me, I'm going to upvote it. And then there's things that, like, actually, like, hit hard and you're like, damn, that was a good meme. Definitely. Amazing. So that was the end of my questions. I don't know if you had any questions for me or any other additional thoughts you wanted to share on the subreddit. One thing that there wasn't really a great spot to put on, but this was something that I found a while ago and I have this screenshot, was that there was this thing that you could type in a subreddit and it will show you a user overlap. So it would be um, like if it was a score of one, it would be that, you know, a user who is browsing TFIRL is no more likely to frequent that subreddit than an average user. And then a mm -hmm. score of two means they are twice as likely and so on and so forth. So out of curiosity, I threw our subreddit into there. The highest hit was 209 times more likely if you frequented TFIRL to frequent furry IRL. That makes which sense. Is a very, yes. Followed by 154.95 times to frequent r slash furry. Okay. So those two are like far and away like the biggest numbers from a few that I threw in there to see anything like, um, anything, um, any overlap there. The next one yeah. was 52.72 times for Hollow Knight memes, <laughs> which is... What? Yeah, that one surprised me. Um, <laughs> And then just a few more down the list, um, 35 times for Five Nights at Freddy's, um, 24.72 times for Egg IRL, interesting, oh, yeah, um, 23.57 times for Sunly Gay, which is, it's an interesting mix of like, you can see a few of these where it's like, the first two being furry, and then a good number of like, meme subreddits, but mm -hmm. ones that are like, yeah, I could see the overlap there for a good number yeah. of them. Oh, that's fantastic. The one right under suddenly gay's Linux memes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get your programmer socks on. <laughs> it's it's true, it's true. The the stem to TF pipeline is strong. Yes. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I also want to bring up, I, I think that all kind of brought a, a, a kind of a hilarious, in looking back at it, it was kind of annoying at the time, but, you know, when, when crypto was really hitting off, you know, there was apparently some sort of coin that go, went by oh, FTM, and, and they had all sorts oh, of bots just dropping all sorts of spam into the server, and, and I think at some point the subreddit as well, just just desperate trying to get someone to, to bite. <laughs> Course, so for course. those who are curious, I see, um, oh geez. Okay. I'm sorry. I like looked at this. We have a, oh my God, this is still scrolling. Oh my Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I just went into our band log and I see, um, they're all deleted users now, but we had to force a bot to ban them on site because there was so many of them. They would join immediately send friend requests to people with the FTM tag on our server, right. which is incredibly frustrating because that's a good yeah. contingent of them. But so that is, um, I'm sorry. Let me try and count this out here. Oh. Yeah. We set up a bot to do it because we were not able to, <laughs> to there, there were several a day. It was,
Oh, this is a whole bunch. It's 57, if I've counted this properly, bots wow. of this one stupid cryptocurrency. That is over <laughs> half of our ban list for the server. <laughs> As with as with many things, crypto can get fucked. Yeah, so. very much so. We oh are, um, it wouldn't be right. We are cryptophobic in this server. There we go. <laughs> yes, this podcast is also cryptophobic. So, season one OGs will know that's a meme. Um, anyways. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on to the podcast. I was curious um, if folks want to find you online and you wish to be perceived, uh, <laughs> where can they find you? So this may come as a shock to you, but we have a Discord server. <laughs> what? Yeah. A Discord server? No way. Um, do we have a... Did we get the custom invite ever set up? I don't remember. We did. It is discord.gg slash tf hyphen irl because apparently underscores don't work in discord invites amazing so if folks wanted to uh hop into the discord they will find all of y'all there is what i'm getting the sense of that is correct amazing any other socials you want to shout out or no that's good i mean they they can find me on various sites as just thundergonian that's F.A., Reddit, Twitter, pretty much any social media site, but mm -hmm. they, they won't really find much of interest, I'll, I'll admit. Yeah, I, I mostly just tweet about, like, computers and other things like that. <laughs> no, that's fair. You can find me at uh, 16,000 Theme Parkway, Doswell, Virginia. Um, <laughs> that's a joke. That is my actual place of work, though. Um, you can follow me on my quote unquote regular account that is at Stormy Finnick, you'll mainly see me retweeting lots of cute animal pictures because that is the only way I stay sane on Twitter. Um, I also have no. my uh, trash roller coaster opinions on there. If you're, you know, part of the weirdly decent overlap between furries and coaster enthusiasts. Um, <laughs> if you want to follow my more TF specific one, which is again mainly just retweets, that is at Polyfilled Finnick, spelled P O L Y F I P O L Y F I L F E N N E C. Perfect, amazing. Well, thank you so much uh, to all three of you for coming on and taking us up on that long overdue invite. And thanks, everyone, for listening to this week's uh, interlude episode. I hope you all enjoyed the little switch up in format. And of course, we'll be back next week with more TFE goodness. So in the meantime, I hope you all stay safe, stay hydrated, stay sane, keep an open mind and stay TFE. And I will see you all soon. Thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Yeah.